cliffside. And this is cliffside permaculture. My pronouns are they, them. So you might say, they likes growing on a cliffside. And if you'd like more information about that, I have one video up so far. Um, probably gonna upgrade it later. And this is my permaculture. I'm in a nice close-knit little neighborhood. So they probably all think I'm insane right now. Um, I grow very tightly spaced plants. I'm a small nursery. There's way too many daffodils and I am learning some of the more intensive food production methods while growing plants that are a lot less work to get food off of because you just put them in once and they continue to come back and give you food every single year. That is the general idea of permaculture, I'd say. Let's take a look real quick down the cliff and just see what we're looking at, huh? Ooh, steep. It's terraced. We have terraced gardens going down the cliff. It is probably a 70% grade, I do believe. It's like, and I have a tire stairwell that I made just from scrap tires that you pick up alongside the road that people are leaving there to rot and make bugs in. Nice, free, easy. I've also got little fenced in areas. I've got theories about how to keep the deer from eating your food that is a little bit different than usual because it's not real tall. It's just small, short, easy to reach over, but Critters don't like climbing up into small, enclosed, difficult to exit spaces. So that's how I've been approaching that. Um, I've also got a really big bit of a focus and possibly obsession with native food plants. All of those are perennials. In the US, um, there was a very robust agriculture system pre-existing to white landfill. And those plants have been in food breeding programs for millennia. And also that allowed for the flora and fauna to co-evolve with them. We have a lot of pollinators that aren't bees or that are native bees, which are starting to go extinct, uh, that need to be supported by native plants because that's their reproduction, that's their housing. Some of them, the young can only eat that specific native variety. So you might not be aware that there are native milkweeds and there's non-native milkweeds and the non-native milkweed displacing the native milkweed it has less of that toxin that makes the monarch butterflies caterpillars be toxic and so if the monarch is landing on the milkweed but it's the wrong it's the asiatic variety of milkweed then that little critter isn't toxic anymore. The birds are starting to learn that they can eat the caterpillars and that's part of why our monarch butterfly population is collapsing. So that's just one tiny little example of why it's so important to make sure we're supporting our native plants. We have so many native food crops. Um, we do have a native praying mantis, but the one that's protected by the government is not a native praying mantis. We have a Carolina mantis, and it needs a flower I grow in the back. It does not need any other plant. Want to find out what that is? Stick around. Um, yeah, so there's all these different plants that are native creatures have a really strong dependence on and that can give us food. It's bone set. Yes. So if you grow bone set, good for you. That's awesome. 
Um, it's a medicine, it's not a food. And it also gets so tall. So, and it loves wet, 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 very damp areas. Um, so, I'm also reintroducing mushrooms. I've got a lot of wood chips going on here. Fun fact, further north than South Carolina, there are no native earthworms. Our leaf litter used to be much, much deeper in the region that I live in. And then earthworms showed up. So I do believe that reintroducing a whole lot of forest floor type of materials, such as the wood chips, is encouraging our soil to be more like it was before that major environmental change. So there you go, deep litter method, right? Um, so that's, I do keep quail. I have a very silly couple of kitties, so one of them loves sitting on top of the door frame and talking to me while we're out here gardening, so we say hi to that kitty kitty. What are you doing up there, crazy? You're being crazy, yes you are, don't fall. Hi, crazy. Oh, you're so cute. Did you need all the attention and I was, wow, what are you doing and how? Um, I am a little bit wacky. What can I say? And I am obsessed with gardening. At the moment that I'm recording this, I'm working on a project with pathway swales. So instead of polyculture, food forest permaculture out in Vancouver, Canada, I'm in Pittsburgh, PA, by the way, US, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, instead of making it a compost heap in a ditch, I'm opening up a ditch for drainage and then backfilling it with a ton of wood chips and growing mushrooms through it. Phoenix oyster mushrooms and wine cap mushrooms both have native varieties and I've sought out suppliers that provide those so that I can get those established here. The wine caps are already established. The Phoenix oyster mushrooms are new here. Um, and I'm hoping that those will do really, really well and kind of like start turning the bedding into nice, rich, loamy stuff. And then I'm gonna use it for the potting soil because I'd like to be able to produce all of my materials on site such as that. I do tap into waste streams, for example. I always have a chip drop pile next to my house at the moment and it is so wonderful. I love having it and that will continue to be a staple because there's there's nothing like having a really good supply of wood chips. Like it's really transformed the way that I garden. We have all these logs around from chip drop too and they function as benches and tables and stuff like that and it's really nice uh but those are just they're just around so i am into food stewardship quail they're not native but golly the eggs are very nice to have and the meat's pretty good too yes i do process my birds for meat uh, so i don't know what else to say this is my setting we have a lot going on here. I think I'll give you as a closing to this channel introduction video. I think I will give you a fast mode walk about the garden. We'll just look at everything. So hang on for a super speed walking tour. Yeah, everything is pretty dormant. What can you do? <laughs> Hope that didn't make you too dizzy. So, yep. Oh, look, my tripod's still there. <sighs> well, if any of that sounds interesting, I hope you'll stick around. But regardless, 
and I say this a lot, thank you so much for visiting the cliffside. This is permaculture. Take care. Bye. Are you balancing yourself on the coat rack back there, or is it that all based on the railing? I'm so confused. Huggles, what if I pull back? Not good. Not good, huh? Pretty baby. Oh, you like that, huh? You're so upside down. How are you even doing this? How? How is this physics. This physics doesn't make any sense at all. I got your foot. You tried to get my foot, so I got yours. Oh, noms. Watcha, watcha, watcha. He's so gentle. Hi. Where are you going? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You're falling. Don't fall. Good save. Good save, crazy baby. You purring. I hear you purring.